All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Carmen Arison. I'm the Assistant Director of Library Services at uh, Strathmore Library here. I'd like to welcome uh, Jen Young with uh, Canada Cemetery Project. Just to give everybody a heads up, we are video conferencing this uh, program out to four other libraries. So hi Acadia, Tabor, uh, Drumheller, and Bicycler. I want to thank you very much fair. for joining us. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so we'll get to it. So can everybody hear us okay? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. There we go. Thumbs up. All around. Excellent. I like the chairs. The chairs are <laughs> wonderful. The chairs of silence. All right, so I will uh, let Jennifer get to it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. So hi, my name's Jen Young. Um, this is Canada Cemetery Project. And how I got involved in this is Way back when I was younger and stuck in the Saskatoon airport, I picked up a book and it was about interesting graves in Canada. And this lady had gone around and she had taken pictures of very interesting graves. And I gave the book to someone I no longer had, it, but it kind of got me on a quest that there's a lot of stories to be found in cemeteries. And that's where the library in, in me comes out. I'm like, I love the stories. So if you want to talk to me, I, you can follow me on Twitter, you can email me. These notes are available. I'm available to do a presentation of any size, obviously to four different places at once. And I believe it'll be up on the YouTube channel afterwards for the libraries. Canada's Cemetery Project debuted in 2004. It is a volunteer project. I don't get paid for this. Nobody gets paid for this. Sorry about your luck. We do it because we love it. It currently offers a free and searchable database of over 18,000 known Canadian cemeteries. And as more people finish, more cemeteries. It offers a variety of information for genealogists, names, location, histories. Um, often on the page they have links to local history databases that's specific to the area. Lookup offers, transcripts, indexes, and photos. To reserve a cemetery. So if you want to do this project for yourself, this is the website you go to. You can click on the volunteer link. There's tons of volunteer jobs. You can offer just to go look something up. You can offer just to take the GPS of the cemetery. But the two that I was interested in is being the photographer and the indexer. So the indexer is kind of cataloging a cemetery, and the photographer, you take pictures of the cemetery. So, any questions about that? No? She hasn't held up the slow down sign yet, so I'm good. <laughs> taking pictures. Once you've reserved a cemetery, you can start taking it's important to reserve a cemetery because that lets them know that someone's going to do it. Or someone may have already reserved it and you go and take all these pictures and someone else has already been working on it. So you don't want to overlap. You can take them all at once or spread it out. Um, I was saying the Strathmore Cemetery took me two whole summers to do. I went over as I had an hour or two of spare time and did it and then I would come home. I chose down to write the information as I went to help with indexing. And this is all it looked like. So I filled two books of these. Name, dates. That's it. If the headstone was particularly hard to read and there was inscriptions, I would write those down as well. Otherwise, they can read them based off the picture. My handwriting got considerably worse as this project went on, but the pictures got better. <laughs> Things to take with you when you're at the cemetery, because believe it or not, these things are not really built for living people. You take a hat, take some water, take some sunscreen, some bed spray, a working camera, batteries, a notebook, pen, a planned bathroom break. The Esso by the Strathmore one has a great slush machine and the cleanest bathrooms I've ever seen, so I was thrilled. A ray to wipe the dirty headstones just to get some of that stuff off so that you can read them. And a cell phone. You notice I didn't put a friend there. There are few and far between sometimes when you're going to go stomp around a cemetery. Sunny days are not always the best. Reflections can ruin your shot. These are a couple. And these are up on the website because I'm lazy and I'm not retaking pictures. But it's a little eerie to see yourself reflected back. <laughs> In a headstone, that's just kind of creepy for the best of people. Um, I really like the wedding rings as a new design in headstones as well, where they have their marriage date and stuff. But that's just another piece of information for genealogists to be able to pinpoint. Shadows are not always helpful, so on a great big sunny day, that is my shadow. But if I hadn't done that, you couldn't see the headstone at all. The glare was too much. Um, I was looking on their website, and they said suggested taking a black umbrella with you. 
to help with the shadows and to make that. I'm like, well, where's that information when I started? <laughs> I just did the best I can. Take pictures of all the sides of the headstones. So the front and the back. Often there's very important information on the back. Um, this one has a brand. I've seen some where they have the picture of the farm. Sometimes they list other descendants. There's a lot of important info that can be found on the back of the headstone. And you only have to take a picture of the back if there's information there. Try to clean as best you can without damaging the headstone. So I used a rag, but I couldn't really do that, get that off. Um, other than a rag, I really would recommend trying to clean any headstones. These are technically the property of the families. And so it's not very nice to wreck a headstone, and there is lots of ways to wreck a headstone when you think you're trying to help. So it's best to leave it as is. Um, you can see that's one of the ones where I would have written everything down because I could use my fingers to follow and see what it was. Um, if you use your photo editors, you can play with the contrast and you can sometimes get the letters to pop out that way as well. Take scenery pictures, lots of beautiful pictures, and signs, tree dedications. These are the Legion stones in the Field of Honor. That's my car. There's my water bottle. Nice. Um, this is another cemetery I did. It's the Fern Cemetery out in Saskatchewan. And this is just a picture, and that's the history of the cemetery, which is great that it's right there for people to see. Oh, it's really good on the big screen on my little computer. I can't even read that. And that's the Fern Cemetery. You can see why that took me an afternoon. <laughs> To send the pictures in, you can use Zoom, Foot, Dropbox, or email. You can crop them as you wish. I sent them in as I went, rather than one great big file. Zoom, Foot, out of about 100 pictures, it really cropped out. Dropbox was my best bet. But if you can send them in any way you want. They're really generous. They'll use any free share service that you're comfortable with. And if you're not, they said you can just email them a jump drive with the pictures on mail them, snail mail, a jump drive with the pictures on them, and they're fine with that as well. Tips for indexing. So for indexing the pictures, I would bring them home, and I open up my Excel sheet, which they sent me, with all the headings, and then I would open up my pictures. So I have my pictures here and my Excel sheet here. And you just go through it. Senior pictures get a zero for the year of death. Easy enough. Same thing, you can do it in small batches or in large batch pictures and index together. So I would go over, I'd take maybe 100 pictures, go home, index 100 pictures, and send it off. I may not get back to the cemetery for two or three weeks. These projects are at your own pace. I said Strathmore took me two summers. If it took me three summers, they're perfectly fine with that. I use Zoom, Foot, and Dropbox. Um, last names are all caps, and that really helps when you're doing the max and mix, because you have big letters and small letters. They just all go in capital letters. If a spouse or a parent is on a headstone but not buried there, they do get dates and put a relationship in the relationship column. This is often for children. Um, they'll say little Johnny, parents, or beloved son of so-and-so. And so the parents also, because they're listed on the headstone, they get, you can search for the parents as well in the big index of things. However, if a spouse is on the headstone and they haven't passed away yet, they don't get an entry. Unless you can tell, like, the birth date for the spouse is 1800-something. I can assume they've passed on. They may not be buried there, but they've passed on. More tips include the maiden name if it's there. That's really important also for people doing genealogy. It just gives them one more thing to look for. Include all the pictures you needed, front and back, footstones if you can find them. I found a lot, you know, they say mother or father, whatever. I use the split screen, go through living people. Any questions about that? I fly through that really fast. <laughs> so this is the case of the child I was talking about. Every headstone gets indexed. So in memory of Roy, son of Matt and Corey Gates, age six years and eight months. The only time I would fill out the age column in an Excel sheet is if it's on the headstone. 
If it's not on the headstone, don't do any math, leave it blank. People can figure that out for themselves. However, in this case, they just put died. They didn't say when he was born. So the fact that he was six years and eight months is really important information. And that's what my Excel sheet looks like. So these are also pictures. So over here, this is the name of your photos. And that's just the name the camera or the computer gives them. Your first name, your last name, if you made a name thrown in there. Your death, your birth. These are my scenery pictures. These would be the back of the headstones or the foot plates. A1 also goes with. You can have lots, as many as you need. Note to admit, sometime if I couldn't quite read something, or if it was in a different language, um, in the Strathmore Cemetery, I found Chinese symbols, I found German, I found Dutch. I'm not a translator. I just put, someone please translate. And they actually, that is one of the jobs you can volunteer for if you know a couple languages, is just to go through and translate headstones for them. This is how it looks to search on the website. And so this is how it would come up. Yates, Cora, Matt, they just get parents. Age. Any cues? Nope. Now we get to the interesting story parts. Um, so this one, the set, it was a husband and wife. It's very ornate. Headstone, they passed away. They were both 24 years old and they died within a day of each other. So this is where the stories come in. I'm like, there's a story there. Someone says it's probably the Spanish flu. Um, I said, was it a house fire? Like, and the other interesting thing is I didn't find this name anywhere else in the cemetery, which was kind of interesting. So if there was no family at age 24 and been married for a couple of years, I would have assumed there's children somewhere, right? So for a genealogy standpoint. And this could be where, you know, sometimes it's that uncle or, you know, someone went out west, but we don't know what happened to them. They never came back. This helps you out a little bit. It starts you on a longer search. This is the oldest death date I found in the Strathmore Cemetery in 1909. I have my serious doubts if this is the original headstone. It looks very ornate to me for 1909. Um, if anyone can tell me what an average headstone would cost in 1910, we were talking about receipts. That's one of the things I would love to know. I will have a bunch of receipts. Look for the headstone <laughs> ones. <laughs> I actually contacted the Bow Glenbow Museum, and they didn't know either. But they could tell me at the time in Calgary there was actually a lot of stonemasons around because they were doing all the sandstone buildings in Calgary. So it may not have been as expensive as we might have thought because they were available to do so. Um, the other thing is Strathmore was established in, what, 1905, 1900? I find it very hard to believe nobody died in the five years. So there has to be older cemetery or older graves, and there probably is that I, the things are gone. Um, however, my son came home from school one day and told me, he says, did you know the cemetery used to be over at the Kinsman Park? And it flooded every year, so they moved it, which is a disgusting job. But I'm like, oh, this explains a lot of why we can't find anything past that point, because they moved it. And so, and that's where the cemetery records, I did contact the town to get them, because I know there's graves there, but they weren't able to give them to me at that time. Lots of people say, yeah, we have them. And they know, I've seen the map, they know where the bodies are, but they don't necessarily know whose they are. Um, the other one about this was interesting is it's right at the fence. So if the body's on the other side, it's gone down the hill somewhere. Does anyone know who Frank Stollery was? So this was quite intriguing to me. It says Frank David, TV Dick. I assume that meant he was on a TV show when he played Dick. And in Calgary, that's possible. Calgary had television stations in the 60s. But no one could tell me who he was or what he played. I'm like, so while they gave us some important information, they maybe could have told me what show he was on or a station or something like that. Well, you notice in the bottom corner, they copyright your photos for you. I didn't do that. The website did that for me, which is very nice. I don't mind if people use my pictures as long as they give me credit. 
Other languages, um, this is the, I'm assuming Chinese writing, could be Japanese writing too. Um, as I was photographing these ones, I'm like, oh, this is an odd name, and the names were Tashi, Shi, and Masi. The other names were just as difficult, but obviously they just didn't translate well. And so it wasn't until I saw this one, I'm like, oh, it all makes sense now that these were obviously um, Oriental people and the names did not translate into English well at all. Um, headstones have come a long way. Um, it used to just be a nice box. You can get anything you want on it. And so, you know, what's the names and dates, but it also tells us some important information about the people buried there other than being incredibly young over here. Obviously a hockey player, cats, artists, painter, um, lease construction cat there. I don't think I like any brand of truck this much. <laughs> like that's a little much for me, but okay. Um, many cemeteries do have, they give you a year to put your headstone up and it's required to put up. However, it's not enforced. <laughs> I noticed in the Strathmore, um, I came across a lot of the funeral home tags there, and some of them were from like 2010. I'm like, no one's bothered to put up a headstone yet. And maybe they're waiting. Um, you know, these are for the family, and some families don't feel the need, which is perfectly acceptable to me. You can have pictures of your house, Um, I really like this one, obviously, farm scene, legion members, and there again is the plaques. Um, you'll find a lot of um, husband and wife. It used to be the someone would die first and you would put the name on for the spouse and the beginning date. And it was just the end date that had to be filled in later because it was considered too expensive to do it all at once. I'm not fond of that, just pay the money. <laughs> It's cheaper than it once was. It's a much easier process. But the idea of going to the cemetery and finding my name on a headstone is just a little too creepy for me. But some people, that's how they do it, and that's how it's been done. Um, we were talking about the marrieds. I really like the wedding rings. Married October 11th. You, know, you can get some nice stuff there. So you can see that one. I should have cropped this one a little better. But you can see dash hounds, there's a picture of a truck over there. It's really, it's, the sky's the limit for what you want to do with the headstone nowadays. Example of a military headstone. Now, this is where I'm unsure, but I believe these are paid for by the military or some service. They all look the same. Um, and it's not until I got into the higher, more recent dates that you would find a couple like this buried together. Um, it used to be, um, if the husband was in the military, he'd be buried in the field of honor and the legion stones and the wife would actually be in a different part of the cemetery. And so now that they relaxed the rules to allow, even if she wasn't a member of the military, that the wife or husband could be buried with the wife. Jen? Yes. The, um, with a lot of the military ones too, <clears throat> there is a website, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, in this book somewhere. <clears throat> you can look up the military uh, insignias, oh, the yes. military um, abbreviations, mm -hmm. and it will tell you what they served, where they yes. served, etc. Oh, that's et cool. Yeah. And you know, the ranks. Now, to someone who's in the military, this probably does make a lot of sense to them. <laughs> Me, I'm like, okay. I've heard of wrens, <laughs> you know, in the Royal Air Force. But SL, I'm assuming, is a second lieutenant. But I could be wrong. There's lists of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then each branch has their own. It's great. Um, it is important when you take pictures to look outside the cemetery. Uh, this one was actually found outside the fence in Strathmore. You may know Strathmore has extended it. But what you may not notice right away is that they've left about a seven-foot buffer zone between where the fence ended and where they're putting it. Um, and that's because often people, especially back in the day, would be buried outside the fence, either for religious reasons or they couldn't afford to be buried in the cemetery, and so they were buried outside the fence. 
Um, I could find no name or date or anything on this headstone, and yet to me it was obviously a grave and a headstone, but very ornate to me outside the fence. So if anyone knows who that is, and to make corrections, if you do know, you can go onto the website, you can click on this picture, and you can say, you know, there's a, book, a link there where you can submit corrections and other information, which is kind of nice. So the project's never really done as people keep adding their own information. Um, you can have color on the headstone, which is kind of cool. This one's from 1998, and those colors are still very vibrant. So you can get as creative as you want. And then this is the last headstone. And I found this more towards the end of my search there, and I just loved it. I'm like, what a nice thought to leave on your headstone. So, um, you'll notice it's in the grass so that it can be mowed over. Um, the best time to take pictures is obviously the summer. In the winter, you would miss this, and a lot of them are like that. And you, you, but you can tell us I had to pull the grass back to get under there. They do get covered up. So, if you guys like, you can go onto the website now, and we can search for family or anything you like. Um, if you want to pull up the Wayne one first, that one's really cool. Was there any questions from the other outer realms? Okay, so you can search by person. Or by cemetery. So if you just put Wayne here and then put Alberta here. <coughs> oh, my internet's not working. Did you time out? No, it's got a. Oh, there you are. If you just Google um, Canada's um, cemetery project, it will come up. Oh. Sorry, I'm running too. <laughs> <laughs> Second one down. Oh, oh. No, you don't want to go to the KC Academy Fesh. Oh, apologies. <laughs> it's okay. I don't think you guys are into Irish dancing as I am. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Okay. And this is very neat. So you can see this cemetery has not been done, and this one has been done. So it's showing you that there's pictures and an index there. This one, there isn't one. So if you want to go and reserve your own cemetery, you just have to look it up and then click on it. And then over here, it'll say if you want to reserve it, you click on it, send them an email. They'll tell you if someone else is doing it or not. And that's it. The project's all yours. And if you get it done, you get it half done, you're like, okay, I'm done. Just send them back and you know say this is where I got. Here's my stuff, and they can hand it off to someone else. So, I'm like pulling up the Wayne Cemetery. Yeah, if you can, please. <coughs> what I liked about this, if you can scroll down, mm -hmm. so it's nice that you can see the map. They put in that description right off the bat of where the cemetery is. The, right, all important information. Most people have been toying over. It's got a good time. And so unreadable ones are the actual graves, but if you just click on any of these actually, and it's just a flack that they've taken a picture of. But what this has done is it's made it searchable. So when you go back, you could search all of Canada for the last name Adams, and George will come up. Print it. <laughs> so, 
Was there any people or any cemeteries you guys want to see or done? Any family? Do we have any questions from everybody? Anybody all, um, video conferencing who wants to ask Jen a question? No, we're good. Okay. Have a, a birth place or where your your relatives resided. Yeah. How do you find the closest cemetery to that place that, that where it's, everything's been changed? I would search. So if you have the name, and we can go back, I would search by the name and by a province. So just click on the search button up at the top again. So find a person. So yeah, obviously I was searching the wrong spot. Can you tell? Oh, we can do surname up for, and I bet you there's some. You can do all in Canada. Let's see. We might get a lot. You might get none. It depends if their cemeteries have been done. Two pages of them. So sometimes, you know, if you really want to narrow it down, you put in as much information as possible. If you want to widen your search, put in as little nitpick as possible. Um, sometimes, see now that's her maiden name, but it still came up. You look at the index properly. Sometimes last names, spellings have changed, especially and so it's important to look for all versions of the name or, you know, look for half the name if it's the last half that kind of gets fuzzy when you try and get more hits that way. Oh, if you just want to click on the volunteer button, I can show you guys how to volunteer. So, Cemetery Sleuth, Volunteer Lookup, Transcriber, Photo, Photographer, Indexer, Translator. Um, look up, so that's just, you don't want to go take pictures of the cemetery, but you're like, you know what, it's right by the house. If anyone wants me to go look for a headstone, I'm willing to go do that. You know, so sometimes you might get four requests a summer, you might go 10 years without a request at all. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what a look up volunteer is, but you may click on that. Same thing, cemetery sleuths, that's finding the information about the cemeteries, all that. So you can be as involved as much as you want or as little as you want, which is nice. It is volunteer, and they're very nice to their volunteers. I was thinking of getting a GPS. That's part of their map project is to get a GPS listing for all these cemeteries. So sometimes, especially out in the country, they get hard to find. <laughs> So this is what you've done is indexer and yeah. photographer. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I did. I just found it easier because I was already at the cemetery taking the pictures and writing down the information to index them myself. It didn't seem, you know, I could pass that off to someone else, but I'm like, I can do it. It's not a problem. But if you don't want to do that, just take the pictures and pass them off to someone else and someone else will do it, but they won't get up as fast. Uh, the nice part is, as I got done, the sections, they put it up right away. So, you know, what I got done in the first summer, they had up the first summer. And then what I got done the second summer, they had up on the second summer. Jen, can yeah. you talk about um, the difference between uh, this website, we were talking about this earlier, and the Find a Grave? The Find a Grave website, website. right? And if you go to the home page, um, sometimes it tells you there. The Find a Grave website has been... This website has taken over Find a Grave website. Find a Grave website didn't necessarily have the whole cemetery, but as people were doing lookups, they would put it up. So it's just, 
And they're right now they're in the backlog of find a grave trying to get it all transferred over to this server. Used to have it. Um, last December, actually, the website went down for about three months. They had discovered a security leak. And I was crying. I'm like, I'm supposed to do presentations on this, and there's no website anymore. And I had done a lot of work for this website, so I was very glad to see that it came back up. It's actually housed on Ancestry. It's the house, but you don't have to pay for this. This is the free service, because it's run by volunteers. And you. I assume you're all here because you want to catalog a cemetery. <laughs> right? Yes. <coughs> So can we assume that that the Find a Grave website essentially will be... It will be defunct. Yeah, yeah, it will eventually go. Uh, the gentleman who used to run that is retired. Okay, gotcha. And so he's like, I'm kind of done. I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> now the Find a Grave website, wasn't it more also into, like, international? Yes. Uh, I haven't really played with that one, yeah. per se. And, and this is strictly more Canada. This is all Canadian. Um, I would be surprised if other countries don't have something like this. Okay. But I, back when I read that book, this is what I envisioned. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how to make a website. So I was very thrilled to see the website's already made. I just have to submit my stuff and they put it up and it's like magic. <laughs> well, that works for me. So how did you find this? Like, how did you find I just it? Googled it. Canada cemeteries or you know indexing and so I kind of stumbled upon it and it stuck with me for a couple years before I actually took the plunge to do it and I had to be able to leave my children at home by themselves because they did not want to go with me to stomp around a cemetery for any reason um, the Strathmore one there's one side of the fence that I actually did not look on the outside of because there's a great big wasp nest there and I didn't feel that committed <laughs> like I'm good thanks that was my limit. <laughs> there was the line. <laughs> Not doing it. So, so if you click on provinces and territories, you can search by, you know, provinces. Obviously, territories. Updates. They also have a Facebook page you can like, and they often give you updates on what cemeteries have been added recently, which is kind of nice. Follow us on Facebook, and sometimes the others. Um, the gentleman who was cleaning all the headstones in Drumheller came up on this, so you get. Uh, there was a cemetery in Ontario. There was a court case because they were trying to close the cemetery. Various things like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, please don't log me in Facebook. <laughs> but they are on Facebook so that you can see them. So, which cemetery were you thinking of doing? Um, maybe one in New Brunswick? I don't know the name of it, though. Um, the Galician one's one I'm itching to get in because there's a police cemetery there, which would be very cool to do. <laughs> so you want to get a grant, go spend the summer in New Zealand, Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> and there would obviously be older. Yeah, they've there. got a lot of really old ones. Yeah. Yeah, the headstones out here, sometimes they're just bricks at a time, so they're kind of lost now, so it's important to get the information. Mm -hmm. Nothing. The hard. chairs of silence over there, they're pretty. But <laughs> <laughs> the Wayne Cemetery, everyone yeah. that was listed there, I don't know anything about Wayne, but like, was there anyone buried there after the 1940s? Then? No. So Wayne is a ghost town. So, um, they have the Last Chance saloons there. It was It's by Drum Keller, so it's, it was a mining town. Okay, was the deal. So there's four houses left in town, and they closed the cemetery. Exactly. So yes, there was no one buried there after the 40s, which is why it's vitally important to have that information, because people will not remember who's buried there, or where they were buried, or something like that. So. It's like the old, the Orion Cemetery, um, south of Medicine Hat. Yeah. It's in the middle of a farmer's field. Yes. <laughs> It's like you can't even get in there. No, and so there's lots of private farm cemeteries, and so that's, well, you, a public cemetery, you can go take pictures, whatever. Private ones, you have to get a little more permission. Um, they're considered a public park, so there's really no 
um, problem with going in, although I did email the town to tell them I was going. I said, so there's a creepy lady taking pictures out at the cemetery. That's me. Don't worry. Please don't send bylaw after me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just cover your tracks a little. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Jen, for, for coming and doing the presentation. That was very exciting. It was very interesting. I, uh, I didn't know anything about this project until, until you Now you can all go reserve your own cemeteries. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks and, for having yeah. me. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us on the video conferencing world. Yes. And, uh, yeah, have, every, have a good evening, and thanks again. All right, thank and there you. will be a video recording of this presentation available uh, later on as well. Awesome. Yes. yes, and if anyone wants my PowerPoints or anything, I'm happy to share those with you. Yeah, we can easily share that out with, uh, with the Marigold Library System as well. Oh, you want to tell them about the database. They have the Ancestry.com database. Yeah, if you are into genealogy, don't forget that inside your local libraries, we have Ancestry. Ancestry uh, Library Edition that you can use to do your genealogy research inside your local library. For free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a good night.